Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Just nailed my shin when I tried to move my lamp. And this still hurts really bad. Okay, uh... Alright, listen up. We're doing... Uh, they just came out. I know I said I would do a uh, another... I would do a World War II Eastern Front. But they just came out with a History Matters video about something that I really want to know. And, uh... I make the rules, alright? Not you. I'm in charge. But like and subscribe, guys. Please. Uh, leave recommendations. I was just kidding. Okay, let's do it. Um... Why did the Ottoman Empire join the Central Powers? I have no idea. Uh, History Matters, great channel. Second favorite channel because Epic History TV is so good. But this is amazing as well. And let's do it. Why did I have no clue? I'm, I'm very curious about this. And it just came out. Double whammy. Let's get into it. If you're not subscribed, pull in a chair. If you're subscribed, let more people in. Come on, guys. Be nice. Let's learn about history. In World War One, so the Ottoman Empire made the in World War One, the Ottoman Empire made the decision to join the Central Powers. As you'll be aware, this decision was not exactly in the long-term interests of the Ottomans. At a glance, though, the Ottomans siding with their age-old rivals in Vienna and against nations who could quite easily reach them seems like an odd decision. Which raises the question: Why? Why did the Ottoman Empire join the Central Powers? Well, as of 1914, the so who did they lose that? Um, maybe the Ottoman Empire was not in a good place. It had just finished the 90-year process of losing most of its Balkan. A lot of land. So, is was that two other uh, big nations? I, I'm assuming that was just because of internal kind of local re uh, revolts in Northern Africa and in the Balkans. Uh, yeah. Territories, and it was fairly keen not to. It had just finished the 90-year process of losing most of its Balkan territories, and it was fairly keen not to lose any more. And the Ottomans had poor relations with most major European powers. However, it did have decent relations with France and Britain, and had a growing good relationship with Germany. And since the only great powers that liked them were now at war... So, interesting. So it wasn't just... Uh, it wasn't very cut and dry. They had to make a decision of whose side to be on. Um, interesting. And had a growing good relationship with Germany. And since the only great powers that liked them were now at war, there were many in the Ottoman government that felt that they needed to pick a side. On the pro-German side was Enver Pasha, the Minister for War who had previously served as the military attaché to Berlin and had seen the German army in action. He was thus confident that Germany would quickly and easily win the next major conflict and that it made sense for the Ottomans to get on board with them. For Pasha, an alliance with Germany meant growing trade, military modernization and importantly an ally to protect themselves from Russian designs on Constantinople. On the pro-entente side was the Minister for the Interior, Talat Pasha, who wasn't exactly psyched for war, but thought the risks to the Empire were- Well, so far, with the information I've gotten so far, it seemed that they- Alright, obviously, hindsight, they, uh, their side, uh, um, you know, Germany and Austria-Hungary, uh, did not win World War I, but, um, I think it's very reasonable, uh, having- not knowing that, putting yourself back at that point. If you're not great terms with Russia, and if you join with, uh, Russia and the other powers that- even in a winning the war scenario, they might continue to bully you. And um, they saw that Germany might be more likely to win at the time again. We're not in hindsight. And uh, yeah, so it doesn't seem like that bad of a decision, not knowing the future. ...were much slimmer. A war against the Central Pasha, who wasn't exactly psyched for war, but thought the risks to the Empire were much slimmer. A war against the Central Powers would see little risk of invasion and would allow them to fight their age-old rivals in Austria-Hungary. On the pro-let's-not-get-involved-at-all side was Sultan Mehmet V. However, his position was largely ceremonial by this point and so everyone ignored him. So, as of August 1914, the Ottomans were still on the fence about which side to choose. And there were several factors which pushed them to choose the Central Powers over the Entente That's about which side to choose. Right and there were Perfect. several factors which pushed them to choose the Central Powers over the Entente. The first was the British seizure of two battleships they had been building on behalf of the Ottoman Empire. This act didn't just upset the Navy but also the people since those ships had been largely crowdfunded. The second reason was Wow, so they were building ships that the Ottomans paid for, that they were in the process of building, and then at the last second just, oh, we need these, World War I. Simple. It was seen as the only way that the Empire could survive. Previously, the Ottomans were able to count on the British and French to protect the Empire's territorial integrity. However, their leaders now believed that the Empire's end was a sure thing. And so, for people like Enver Pasha, if Germany, the Ottoman- I'm not smiling because of the end of the Ottoman Empire. I just always- it always cracks me up to see the, uh, 
history matters to simple characters conveying so much through just simple close the eyelids halfway and angle the eyebrows. It just cracks me up every time. Sorry. Thief that the Empire's end was a sure thing. And so, for people like Enver Pasha, if Germany, the Ottoman's closest ally, lost the war, the Ottoman Empire would effectively lose too. The third was the problem of Russia. Many Ottoman strategists felt that if Russia was doing poorly and came close to leaving the war, there was little to stop the British and French offering up Constantinople to keep Russia involved. And when Russia faced several setbacks on the British Russia and French is. offering up Constantinople to keep Russia involved. And when Russia faced several setbacks on the Eastern Front, the military felt that the time was now to strike Russia and reclaim some of the Ottomans' old lands. These things combined led to the Ottomans favoring the Central Powers, which is why when two German cruisers fled from British ships into Ottoman territory, the Ottomans chose to shelter them, and in return the Germans gifted them the ships as a sweetener, and thus the Ottoman government's mind had been made up. So what about the Austro-Hungarians, given that they had only recently annexed Ottoman lands and supported its enemies? Yeah, kind of well, the Ottomans didn't actually sign a defensive agreement with the Habsburg Empire because they didn't want to. Because they, well, the Ottomans didn't actually sign a defensive <laughs> agreement with the Habsburg Empire because they didn't want to. Fine, I'll join you, but I'm not talking to Austria. <laughs> because they didn't like them. They would fight side by side, but only because they're doing publications to Germany. Oh, the God. only problem now was public support, since the people of the Ottoman Empire didn't want war. So how did the government get around this? Easy, they provoked a war instead of declaring one. Those ships that the Germans gave the Ottomans were then used to launch attacks on Russian coastal cities. This was done under the orders of Enver Pasha, and upon hearing of this, the Ottoman ministers tried to remove him. Before this could happen, a British and later a Russian ultimatum had come through. Have I spoken too soon on declaring this not my favorite channel yet? Because this might, this is one of my favorite uh, videos. Demand from tried them. to remove him. Before this could happen, a British and later a Russian ultimatum had come through demanding an apology, some cash, and the removal of all German military advisors. The first two demands were fine, if not great, but the last one essentially meant the abandonment of any military modernization, no as well as the Ottomans giving up the only friendly major power that they had, which for many in government was a step too far. And so they said no, the Entente declared war, and the Ottomans were after this all in on the side of the Central Powers. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thank you for watching. Thank you for making History Matters a great channel. Go check them out. That's very interesting. I uh, explained it so well, as I expected them to, uh, History Matters to do, because they're such a great channel. And so it was a mixture of kind of where the cards fell, you know, what cards you had, and uh, um, just kind of weighing your options and just like, uh, there's kind of positive, positives and negatives on both sides. But that was one of the best History Matters channels, which means one of the best kind of history videos I've seen on YouTube hilarious they're only getting better um yeah um <laughs> i love the uh not really making friends with us you're hungry but still kind of getting in on the treaty or the pact uh keep an eye out for next video hit that subscribe button go check out history matters hit that bell icon see you when my next video comes out see you guys special thanks to my patrons